dirty kitchen. Smell that! Smell it! That's fucking older than me! Frozen food. Meatballs! This is ridiculous! They're frozen molded! What's that? Oh, God! From the freezer, I keep it here fresh frozen. Fresh frozen? Yes, sir. There's no such thing. It's either fresh or it's frozen. Incompetent owners. She's deluded that woman. You are insane. You are insane. Yeah, blame me all you want. These excuses that you're insane. I Grandmotherly hostesses. Well done. Wow. These are the hallmarks of every episode of Kitchen Nightmares. Kitchen Nightmares is a staple of the Gordon Ramsay verse. Some would even say it's the best show in the Gordon Ramsay verse. Th that's me. I'm, I'm the person who's who's saying this. For those who don't know, Gordon Ramsay is an icon, all right? He's the salmon cowl of food, all right? He gives it to you straight. Gordon Ramsay is a celebrity chef who owns multiple restaurants, has multiple shows in both the US and the UK. He's very international. And he's probably the most, the most recognizable celebrity chefs in the world. He's kind of that man. Thanks. In Kitchen Nightmares, you get the best side of Gordon Ramsay, okay? The yelling, angry, passionate a-hole. I can give you the best advice you'll ever get. Lock the fucking door and close it down. And then you also get the kind, caring therapist, Gordon Ramsay. Okay? <laughs> okay? So you're not left in the deep end, okay? Because you got it. Combine that with the weekly rotating cast of clueless owners, fed up chef, unhappy customers, and underpaid wait staff, and you have all the ingredients you need for the perfect recipe of a reality hit TV show. So let's break down the show. The history, some fun episodes, how it got canceled, and its return. So for those of you who don't know, Kitchen Nightmares is actually a UK remake or spinoff of the original Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. The UK version started in 2004 and ran for about five seasons until 2007, which is when the US version started. This is an aside, but my aunt and I actually discovered the show when it started airing on ABC America. I like to watch BBC America because they would basically bleep, they wouldn't bleep anything out unless it was the F word. And so I always felt like, a rebel because I was hearing Gordon Ramsay scream <laughs> on Saturday mornings. But in September of 2007, the American version premiered. And in true American fashion, we took something that was great and um, we made it our own. I don't know if it's because of American tele television or because they wanted to capitalize on Gordon Ramsay being the new American a-hole chef, but the American version of Kitchen Nightmares was definitely a change of pace from the original. We're gonna pick ourselves back up and start off with a clean slate. We're yeah, losing the business. We're losing the business. So see, that's why we don't get along. To me, the biggest difference between the British version and the American version of Kitchen Nightmares was the music and the zooming in. Because if you take away the music, the show's like half as dramatic. But when I was doing research from the show, I actually came across this Reddit thread. And I feel like one Reddit user kind of summed it up more clearly, like what the difference is between the two versions of Kitchen Nightmares is. On the British version of Kitchen Nightmares, a restaurant was in trouble because they had bland tomato soup. On the American version of Kitchen Nightmares, a restaurant is in trouble because the father and the son have a lifetime of resentment stemming from alcoholism. <laughs> in the UK version, the owners of the restaurant seem competent enough. They just need guidances on maybe how the menu should be set up or how they can better appeal to their clientele or their customers. But in the US version, the owners need therapy. Yeah, they need therapy. Which is probably why the UK version is overwhelmingly regarded as the best version. So for those of you who don't know anything about Kitchen Nightmares, essentially it's a show where Gordon Ramsay shows up to a failing restaurant. He tries the food, he talks to the staff, he talks to the customers, he tries to understand the challenges that the restaurant is facing and why they can't obtain a customer base. He then revamps the menu, he renovates the dining room, hosts some free therapy sessions so the owners can figure out what's wrong with themselves. Just like that, the restaurant is ready to reopen and obtain new customers and rake in all that moolah. For the most part, every week is a different restaurant, except if you're like super, 
dramatic then they'll like split it into two it's very a formulaic gordon ramsay comes in and saves the day kind of show my favorite episodes of gordon ramsay includes cafe hun which <laughs> the episode was crazy because this lady basically trademarked the term hun in baltimore um now for comparison's sake that's like me going to new york and then trademarking the term dead ass like that's not <laughs> not a good look and it was really funny because my family's from maryland and so i remember when she trademarked hun and my grandma coming into the family room and saying did you know this crazy lady trademarked the term hun that's ridiculous was the entire city basically turned on her and no one wanted to support her or her her business or her diner and so they basically had to spend the entire episode repairing the relationship between her and the community oh and then there was the hot potato cafe episode and i just really liked that episode because because the original concept of the menu is that everything on the menu is potato based <laughs> And apparently their food is so bad that one of the reviewers called eating there like living in spuddy hell. <laughs> you can't, you can't make it up. Like it's, it's so good. He wants all three of you to taste it that you serve people. Oh, and I can't forget my dude Joe Nagy from Mill Street Bistro, okay? When we talk about the epitome of delusion and stubbornness, this fight alone, my God. My God. No. Then wake up! You wake up, idiot! And then there's the myth, the legend, the goat of Kitchen Nightmare episodes. Amy's Baking Company. The craziness of, a of Amy's Baking Company could literally be its own video. But let me tell you just how crazy this episode is, okay? So in addition to the owner fighting a customer, the chef firing the waitress because she asked uh, her a question with a little attitude. Selling sweet and sour ravioli. It has to be one of the most confused ravioli dishes I've ever seen and tasted in my entire life. This episode is actually the most famous for being the one and only episode of Kitchen Nightmares where Gordon Ramsay actually walks out and refuses to help the owners. The owners were so crazy that he knew regardless of what he did, he'd never be able to help them. After fighting with them for like 20 minutes, he just like walks out and he says, I can't do it, I'm done. I think for me, is to get out of it. Good luck. And that episode was so crazy that it went like semi-viral and they even have an, even have like a whole follow-up episode that aired the following season. Like it was crazy. I think that you can come in here and say these things. Are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. But another episode that I feel like will forever live in my subconscious is the Oceana episode. So Oceana, it was a restaurant in New Orleans. It was probably the dirtiest like restaurant that I remember when I think of Kitchen Nightmares. Now one of the cornerstones of Kitchen Nightmares is when Gordon Ramsay goes into these restaurants kitchens and they're, they go into like their walk-in freezer and their walk-in refrigerator and he basically tries to figure out like how clean or how dirty they are. So he'll start finding like all these old foods. Sometimes he'll find like mouse and rat droppings. He'll find spoiled food that he has literally eaten either that day or the day before it's just super disgusting thing super shocking and it always ends with Gordon Ramsay basically yelling and cussing everyone out because he's just so disgusted by what he finds outside look at the mess of this place it's fucking ridiculous and I've always wondered like if you know you're gonna be on a tv show why do you let your kitchens get so disgusting like why don't you clean it up before Gordon Ramsay gets there and the thing about this particular episode Oceana was that it was particularly disgusting um there was like dead rats everywhere rotten food and it was just really really bad and I told myself I was like this can't be real right like people can't be this incompetent and apparently it's not real. Actually, Oceana, they filed a lawsuit against Gordon Ramsay and his production company in 2011. According to Oceana's legal counsel, the restaurant filed its first lawsuit against Ramsay's and the show's producers in 2011 to prevent the episode from airing. The owners had not realized how Oceana would be depicted while the episode was being shot and felt misrepresented in, a, in the way the episode was edited. Nonetheless, the show aired and a, an, a settlement was reached in which the production company agreed to only use footage from the episode in future instances if they paid Oceana. 
and included the latest information on the eatery's current conditions. Uh, well, fast forward to th 2018 and the production company actually posted the, the horrid kitchen scene again with like no information on how the com how the restaurant is doing currently. Oceana ended up suing them again because that was technically against the original 2011 settlement. I get why they sued because if I watched that scene, even with them being a reformed kitchen, I would still go out of my way to not eat there. It's kind of crazy that like the production company would put them on blast like that or show their restaurant in that light. It's, it's, considering it's one of the few Kitchen Nightmare restaurants that are actually still open. Now, do you remember all those episodes I mentioned before? Cafe Hunt, Mill Street Bistro? Well, they're all closed. <laughs> Despite their best efforts, Kitchen Nightmares does not actually have the best record when it comes to helping these kitchens stay open. According to a reality TV update, out of the 77 restaurants that were featured on the show, only 12 are still open. <laughs> That's 15% of restaurants. 15. That's as bad as the couples on The Bachelor staying together. <laughs> and that's actually part of the reason why Kitchen Nightmares didn't return for the seventh season. Fox is actually not the ones who canceled the show. Oh, Kitchen Nightmares did decline in viewership as any older TV show does after a certain number of seasons. It actually maintained a pretty healthy viewership. It was a surprise when it was announced that the TV show wouldn't be coming back for another season because Gordon Ramsay himself actually canceled the show. According to an interview with Entertainment Weekly, explained that he decided to cancel the show because he was just fed up. After filming a UK special and getting into it with the owner, he basically basically decided I'm over this shit. And I also, I found this interview on YouTube where he discusses how eating all of that horrible rotten food actually really messed up his digestion system and had a really bad effect on his stomach and overall health. At the success of the show, I think the combination of the restaurant owners not really taking Gordon Ramsay's advice and going back to their old trifling ways after he leaves and the addition of his health issues, you can see why Gordon Ramsay was over it. But when Fox learned that Gordon Ramsay wanted to quit, they said, hold on, player. Okay. They they were not having it. Dex actually called him up and they were like, my guy, listen, all right, you're the reason why we can afford to have five Bugattis in the garage instead of two Bugattis, like the peasants, all right? You're the reason why we're rich, all right? So you can't just be going off and canceling your shows all willy-nilly. So they basically decided to shelve the show for a few years, give Ramsey a break. He can go off and do some more of the projects. And the idea was after a few years, he could come back, revamp the show, start again. And that's how we got Gordon Ramsey 24 hours to hell and back, baby. Now Gordon Ramsey 24 hours to hell and back is basically kitchen nightmares. But instead of Gordon Ramsey spending a week at the restaurant, he spends 24 hours. And yes, it is just as chaotic and crazy as it sounds. <laughs> it's like Kitchen Nightmares on like five Red Bulls and three kegs of beer. Is that an app description? I don't know. Anyway, okay. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a separate video on 24 hours and that because I, I love that series. It's so fun. Now, even if you've never seen an episode of Kitchen Nightmares in your life, you've probably su been suggested a Kitchen Nightmares compilation on YouTube and or you've seen a Kitchen Nightmares clip come across your timeline. Now, since this decade hiatus, Kitchen Nightmares has definitely found a second life on the internet. Its YouTube channel boasts over six million subscribers. Got to a point where like they'll even upload full episodes of Kitchen Nightmares to YouTube because like, and millions of people will watch it because it's like, it's just that good. I don't know who exactly is on the Kitchen Nightmares YouTube team, but the fact that they've been able to continuously repurpose the footage of a 10 year old show and the videos get tens and millions of views is a talent. It's not only a talent, but it also just shows how entertaining and fun the show is. And this has not only kept the show relevant to mainstream audiences, but it's also introduced the show to younger audiences who otherwise may not have even known that the show existed, who otherwise may not have ever discovered the beauty that is Kitchen Nightmare. And I think the second life that Kitchen Nightmares has found on the internet is part of the reason why it's returning later this year. Yup, you heard right. Our favorite British chef is back. So on September 25th, after 10 years off the air, Kitchen Nightmares is returning and I will be there. And I am very excited. 
Now, they have released the trailer for it on YouTube, so if you're interested, you can look it up. It doesn't look like they've changed much. It looks like it's gonna be good old classic Gordon Ramsay yelling at people, remaking menus, having fun, being a therapist. Like, I'm, I'm excited. I will be right here watching it with my Gordon Ramsay made dinner. Wait, is it, is this, is this fresh? It's frozen. Ah, bloody. <laughs> Frozen. Yes, There's no such thing. See, the fresh oil is frozen.